tonight we're going to be starting chapter 5, uh, and 5.1 is all about bisectors of triangles. Before we look at bisectors and triangles, we need to understand what a few words mean. The first of these is a perpendicular bisector. A perpendicular bisector is a line segment R array that bisects a segment and is perpendicular to that segment. So exactly what the word sounds like. So what I want us to be really, really careful with is make sure that we understand what exactly it means to be a perpendicular bisector. If you recall, perpendicular just means it's going to create a right angle. So if it creates a right angle and it bisects, remember bisect means it splits it in half, it halves the segment, then it's a perpendicular bisector. So I want you to look at this first picture. I want you to look at segment PQ here, this segment right here, or this line. It does bisect AB. So you can see by these marks, we know that it splits AB in half. But if you look at these angles, one is obtuse, one is acute. So it is not perpendicular to AB. Therefore, it's a bisector of AB, but it is not a perpendicular bisector because it doesn't create that right angle. If you look at RS, however, so we're looking at line RS here, you can see that it is perpendicular to JK. And it also bisects JK. These congruent marks tell us that. So therefore, RS is a perpendicular bisector of JK. And then you could have another case down here where two segments are perpendicular to one another, but they don't bisect. So here, if we wanted to label this, put a few letters down here, We'll use x, y. That hasn't been used yet. So here we can say that x, y, that line, is perpendicular, and that's it. It does not bisect. So you need to make sure that you understand that perpendicular bisector, it must be both. It has to bisect and it has to be perpendicular. So now we're going to look at a few theorems that perpendicular bisectors have. And the first of these is the perpendicular bisector theorem. And what it says is that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, and for perpendicular I'm going to do the upside down T of a segment, then it is equidistant to the endpoints of that segment. So that is the perpendicular bisector theorem. So if you have a point on the perpendicular bisector, then it's equidistant to each, each one of the endpoints on your segment. So for instance here, C is on the perpendicular bisector. So that means C is equidistant from points A and B. Well, what does it mean to be equidistant? Think back, that means that it's the same distance from a certain segment. So here, CA is congruent to CB. So because C is on the perpendicular bisector, we know that AC is congruent to CB. Those segments have to have the same length. 
So next we're going to look at the converse of that perpendicular bisector theorem. What the converse says is exactly the reverse of this. If a point is equidistant to two endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. That's the converse uh, theorem. All right, so it just says here, we know that point E, you can see point E down here, we're told that it's that these segments are congruent, EB and EA. So EA is congruent to EB. So that means that point E is equidistant to the endpoints of segment AB. So therefore, we can conclude that E is on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. All right, so we can determine that ED here is, is the perpendicular bisector of our segment AB. So now let's look at putting these theorems to use. So here, we know that WX is 25.3, and we know that YZ is 22.4, And we also know that WZ is 25.3. So what we want to do is find the length of XY. And you can see that here. Uh, it, we know that point W is equidistant from point Z and X, so therefore point W is on the perpendicular bisector of segment XZ. So that means that YZ has to be congruent to xy. So since yz is 22.4, that means that xy must also be 22.4. So that one was really easy. In a lot of these problems you'll see on homework, you're just going to be setting things equal. So let's look at the next one for that. I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this over here, and we're going to look at the next problem. If m is the perpendicular bisector of xz, so this segment is the perpendicular bisector of XZ. That means that WX is 4A minus 15. And also we know that WZ is A plus 12. So what we want to do is find the length of WX. So before we find the length of WX, we need to find the value of A. So we know, since M is the perpendicular bisector, that these segments have to be the same length because we know a point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant to the two endpoints of a segment. So therefore, we know that WX equals WZ, so 4A minus 15 equals A plus 12. Those two pieces are just equal to each other. So therefore, 3A equals 27, so A here is just 9. Now, again, the question did not ask for A. The question asked for WX. So WX will be 4 times 9 minus 15, so that is 36 minus 15, which is 21. So WZ in our segment is 21. If we were to plug that in for WZ, we would find that it is also 21. Those segments are congruent. So the next thing I want to look at are angle bisectors. So angle bisectors do not bisect a side just like the word sounds. They're going to bisect an angle. So an angle bisector is just a line segment R ray 
that bisects an angle. It splits it in half. Okay, so it's bisecting an angle. So here, segment BD, since I have these marks, telling me that those two angles are congruent, I can conclude that ray BD is the angle bisector of angle ABC. And let's remember what that means. We had a little bit of trouble with this on our proofs in chapter 4. Remember that means that ABD is congruent to angle CBD. It splits it into two congruent pieces. So now there are some theorems associated with that as well. And the first one is the angle bisector theorem. It says that if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So if it's on the angle bisector, it's equidistant from the sides of the angle. And when we're finding the shortest distance, a key here is the shortest distance from F to this side, this side of the angle here, it would be the, the distance that gives you a right angle. So what that theorem tells us is that since point F is on the angle bisector of angle DBE, that means that it is equidistant from points D and point E. So therefore, I know that FD is congruent to FE. That's what the angle bisector theorem says. From a point on the angle bisector to each side of the angle, those points are equidistant. If I were to put a point up here, we can call that point H, and to draw a segment to each side of that angle from our point H, those two segments would also be equidistant from the sides of that angle. Okay, so it works with any point on that angle bisector. The next one is the converse of the angle bisector theorem. Again, it is just the flip of the theorem from before. It says if a point is equidistant to the sides of an angle, then it is on the bisector of that angle. That is the converse of the angle bisector theorem. Okay, so if I have this point, for instance, F here, it is equidistant to points D and E. We know that because of the marks. So I know that F is on the angle bisector. So it bisects angle DBE. So these theorems tonight aren't too bad. So we're going to look at a problem uh, pertaining this, and then we are done. So let's look at the first one, angle BAC. And I know that you all have problems identifying angles with three letters, angle B. A, C would just be this angle here. Okay, we've got to, to learn how to do that. It tells us that its measure is 38. And then we're also told that B, C is 5 and that D, C is 5. So therefore, since these points are the same length, I know that point C is on the angle bisector of that segment. So since it's on the angle bisector, I know that these two angles have to be the same. So the question asks me to find the measure of DAC. DAC would be this angle. That is DAC. So if BAC is 38, 
DAC must also be 38 because that angle is being bisected. And we knew that because these lengths were the same. So now let's look at the second problem. The second problem says this. AC bisects angle D. So segment AC bisects angle DAB. So this segment, or these angles, are congruent because AC is bisecting that angle. It tells us that BC is 4x plus 8, and DC is 9x minus 7. And we're asked here to find the length of BC. So of course, before we find BC, we need to find x. So here, since this is an angle bisector, I know that these two segments are congruent. They are the same length. So therefore, BC equals DC. So 4x plus 8 equals 9x minus 7. So therefore, 5x equals 15. So x here is 3. Again, we weren't asked to find x. We need to then find BC. So BC is 4 times 3 plus 8, which is 12 plus 8, which is 20. So BC here is 20. And that's it for tonight. So I hope you took notes on that. I'll be looking at those on Monday when you come in. Um, and then we'll look at some bisectors in triangles. We'll kind of build on this a little bit. See you then.